In the 19th century, sawmills sprang up all over the Adirondack Mountains. Today, the mills are mostly gone, but in the town of St. Armand in the northern Adirondacks, the fine old art of turning trees into useful products is still practiced by Ollie Burgess and his crew at Specialty Wood Products. It's sort of an unorthodox business. Uh, by virtue of its name, you can guess we do the specialty stuff. Uh, I learned a long time ago the best way to beat the competition is not to compete with the competition. So we try to fill the gap between what the big box lumber stores do and provide all of those products and services that people can't find elsewhere. The nature of our business is very diverse. As we walk around, you're gonna see piles of saw logs mixed with piles of one inch diameter cedar logs. We have a huge inventory. Our parameters are we only work with local species. If it doesn't grow within 35 miles of here, we don't want to deal with it. Uh, we purchase from small local logging contractors or harvest ourselves. Our sort of motto is if it grows on a tree in the Adirondacks, we can supply it to you. A fairly large component of our business is custom log railings. We have sold to Lincoln Log Homes, we've sold to Alta Log Homes, we've sold to Coventry Log Homes, but by far the most uh, is just the, the average person who is building a new house or renovating their house and wants to switch from a pressure treated railing to something that has a little more of the Adirondack flavor. These are our spindles that we use for our balusters um, in the railing sections. The bark's peeled by hand and then we put them in these crates and then we bring them in here to chop our spindles. So the ones that are too short, we just set aside and save them because we use them for our diamonds. Basically, someone would do this and fill the wheelbarrow full and then they bring the wheelbarrow over here and this is where our tenoner is. So someone would do this. And then you have a tenon. And these are all set to two inches. So after they're all done, we uh, would bring them over here. And someone would set them up on these, on these uh, benches. And then we use this grinder here. And we grind the knots off because a lot of people don't like the sharp knots on them. You know, we're making railings for inside of people's houses, their decks, so they don't want to hit their hands on those. And then uh, when we go to assemble our actual sections of railing, we just kind of give these a quick rub down, get that hair off them and then we assemble the sections of railing. And then the customer decides if they want to sand these um, and what kind of finish they want to put on them. So when we get ready to assemble our railings, if this was actual railing with the, the bigger tenons on the end, we just basically set it up here on the, on the bench. We just put them in that hole like that. And then we'd get a top rail. And they just, you know, they just go together like that. And then we, we just for shipping, we pin the four corners. And then this is how uh, a customer receives them. They're all labeled on the ends. Um, you get a diagram that matches your deck. And then, you know, anybody can put them together. The core of Ollie Burgess's business is a sawmill. It looks like something out of an old photograph. My sawmill is called a pantograph mill, which is basically a little computer console which has a number of buttons and switches that everything is done with electric and hydraulic motors. Um, so to go through the litany of what happens, we put the logs on the deck. The, the logs will go onto what's called the log deck, which is basically three tubular steel columns with a chain on them. Um, we have a, a hydraulic motor which can advance that chain so that when you're ready for your next log, you just step on a little foot pedal. It advances it to what is then called a lock and load. A lock and load is a little moon-shaped 
um, hydraulically actuated lever that the log comes in, I hit a foot pedal, it grabs that log, flips it over, and puts it onto a ramp which floats it down to the mill. The carriage is the steel structure in which the log actually sits on. The log is locked onto that carriage and then the carriage is advanced through the blade. The blade is a fixed blade on my sawmill and the carriage advances the log through the blade which cuts it. Stevie's going to be running what's called an edger. The first few boards on the log come through with the bark on both edges until you square it up, obviously. It's called two saw edger. It's got two blades. One is fixed and the other is movable. Yeah. So that you can adjust it for the width of the board. This is our new dry kiln. It dries all our lumber, basically. We're going to open it up and have a look inside. Nice and warm in here. <laughs> so it's just good. You might as well, we've got a little bit of everything in here right now. We've got some, just some regular two inch pine. Looks like we've got some big three by 12 live edge pine that a guy ordered for stair treads. Uh, posts for probably a railing system. And over here, there's some more one inch pine and logs. To maximize the efficiency of it, we try to pack in as much of our own lumber as we can just to fill it. The more full it is, the more efficient it runs too. The less for air, as far as the air circulation goes, as tight as you can pack it, the better it operates. There's a different program for every type of wood species, you know, depending on the thickness of the wood and what type of wood it is. And, the, you know, you just set that into the computer and then the kiln basically runs itself. It tells itself when to raise the temperature and lower the temperature, let steam out, and it tells us basically when the wood is dry. Holly Burgess's customers have a name for the local native woods he and his crew mill and supply to them. It's spoken fondly. They call it Hollywood. Hollywood is sort of a name that I didn't coin, but I don't mind it. For Holly Burgess, the success of his specialty wood products business is a dream come true. He loves the work, treasures his customers, and prides himself on creating good jobs for good people. We really enjoy hiring high school students, college students, but we also are pretty proud of the fact that in this little town of Bloomingdale, we support families. Um, we will not hire somebody if we can't offer them enough money to make a good living. I love it, you know, it's every, Every piece of wood, every log is a little different. You know, you see some really unique pieces of wood come off the end of the sawmill. If you like to be outside and like to work with your hands and like to build things, this is a good job. I love coming to work every day. You may or may not know, I used to be a scientist. I worked at the Trudeau Institute. I liked it, now I love my job. You know, other people go to work and they work for 50 hours a week. I come and play for 80 hours a week. And I've told my children, I've expressed to all of them, if you want to be successful, find what you love to do. Find what you're passionate about and you'll find a way to make it happen. It, you know, this is just fun. I, I play all day long.